What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of this Glory Hunter save review. If you are unfamiliar with the Glory Hunter, the idea came from Dr. Benji last year. I've just completely ripped it off. We are doing it live exclusively on Twitch when I'm bringing you catch up season by season on YouTube. The objective, if you are unfamiliar with this series, win the domestic trophies, both the league and the domestic cup from the top five nations in Europe. So England, France, Italy, Germany, and Spain, all within a 20 year period. You also have to pick up the Champions League, the Europa League, the World Cup, and the European Championships. We have had five, we're five? We have had seven glorious seasons so far. This is the season eight review. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So then guys, just to give you a little bit of a context and a little bit of a catch up as to where we are, we are going into season eight at the start of this and things have been going pretty well for us. In our first three years, we started at Hertha Berlin. In our first three years, we managed to pick up two German Cups, a Europa League, and finally the Bundesliga, as you can tell by the graphic surrounding me right now. Then after that, we resigned from Hertha Berlin and we got picked up by Monaco. Whilst we were at Monaco in our first season, we didn't really do very, very well. Uh, we did pick up the Euro um, Europa League Conference title. Um, so that is a competition which is coming in next year in actual real life football and is a European competition. But it's like a third tier competition. So you've got the Champions League, you've got the Europa League, and then you've got the Europa Conference League. We won that. Um, doesn't really mean anything. Didn't mean anything for this save. And then in our second season, we did the League and Cup double. We managed to overturn PSG in both the League and the Cup. Then comes the resignation again after season five. Season six and season seven were taken up by Atalanta. We were the Atalanta manager um, in Italy for that period of time. However, despite finishing second in the league and losing into the, in the Italian Cup final last season, I'll leave a link to, to last episode um, here so you guys can go and check that one out. Um, we, we couldn't quite get a grasp on Italy, which is disappointing. However, the opportunity came for me to become the Juventus manager. Vincent Company had just been sacked as Juve manager, and there was an opportunity for me to take over there. I went for it. In one day, I managed to go from a £25 million transfer budget to a £125 million transfer budget and double the wage budget allowed. So... In my mind, it was a bit of a no-brainer. We were the Juventus manager, and that is where we are right now. We are ready to review the season and what a season it's been. So if you are new around here, what we usually do is we go into the schedule. We talk through the schedule. We talk through, well, actually, first of all, first and foremost, let's go to the transfer history. And you can kind of see the business that we have done whilst we've been at Juventus. Um, we've spent a decent chunk of change, and I'm not going to lie. Um... And basically what we do, we go through the transfers that we've done, who's gone in, who's gone out. We look at the schedule and then there's a live portion um, from taken from Twitch of specific games. Today's you have the Italian Cup final. You have a little bit of something else. And you also have a, um, a Europa League final. As I said, guys, it's been a very, very good season. So first things first, let's start off with the players that we've got rid of, shall we? Um, Matthias Arezzo left for Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, this deal was agreed before I got to the club. I'm very disappointed that he was going that way. Um, I think he's a very good striker, and I would have liked to have kept him. However, that wasn't that wasn't to be. Um, he he departed the club. He went to Borussia Mönchengladbach. We also lost Nico as a central midfielder i think he originally comes from barcelona yeah came from barcelona um good player went over to bayern munich as well 30 30 million which could increase to 45 and a half uh diego gonzalez fullback who we weren't playing left left back left wing back uh he has been purchased by manchester city um uh, abubakar konate has gone to atalanta as you can see the transfers on the right hand side of your screen guys then they go into smaller figures and sort of domestic based loans. Now, on the other side of your screen, on the left hand side, we have the transfers in. So I will say this is the this is the guy we spent a lot of money on. His name is Hans Guzen. However, in my chat, if you are there on Twitch, 
If you accumulate enough channel points, I will let you rename a new gen in the save. This this has been renamed by one of my subs, so this is my centre forward. Um, oh yeah, uh, and uh, he's very good. As you can see, he's had a fantastic season for us. 44 goals and 7 assists in 48 appearances. Um, sensational. Over a goal return again, 44 in the season. He broke the record for the most goal score for Juventus in a single year. Um, but that did come at a price. Um, we paid £82 million to Watford for this guy. He just had two decent seasons in the Premier League um, after they bought him from Genk for £37.5 million. And then he's just gone from strength to strength. He's had two very good seasons. Pretty much all of his career has been fantastic. 7.4 overall over the course of his career. Um, very, very good player indeed in Hans Guzens. The other signing, uh, big signing that we paid a lot of money for was uh, uh, what has been renamed as Chocolate Fountain. I can't remember what his actual name is. I think it's something Fontaine. Um, so he has come in, he was a right back, he, he, that was an area we were really lacking, we paid a lot of money to Leon for him, so our two biggest signings were two Belgians, um, he's a four star right, uh, right back, and he is sensational, his physicals are next level guys, getting up and down the field on that right hand side, he's consistent, loves big matches, um, and we paid 65 million, wow that's a lot, 65 million to Leon for a full back, it was worth it. That's all I'm going to say. It was worth it. Um, in January, we picked up uh, Sandro Tonali from Hertha Berlin, a former club of ours. We did pick up Sandro Tonali, the Italian, for 47.5 million. That could rise to 78. Um, very good player. Very good player. Um, he was kind of a bit part player um, until he got settled, but he popped up towards the end of the season with some very, very important goals. I'm not going to lie. Four goals, seven assists. Average in a 7.1 from central midfield, I think is fantastic, including a lot of his substitute appearances. Um, for me, I think Sandro Tonali is a fantastic player. He's, he's 28 years of age in this save now. We are in May 2028. Um, but very, very good player. Very good depth for us. Uh, we also picked up centre-back Billy Camuto. Um, I have probably butchered that name. He was from Liverpool. Um, I don't know where he starts this save. Does he start at Liverpool? at the saves yes he does been out on loan to a couple of different clubs frankfurt real betis valencia and then he's had a, a time at liverpool in the first team uh not really played a great deal we managed to pick him up 13 we managed to pick him up for 40 million um he was center back cover i was finding that a lot of our center backs um in terms of our center backs we did have matias delict and ruben diaz they are two fantastic elite level center backs but i wanted someone to sort of bridge that gap in between those two um, he's not very good in, he's not very consistent, he's not great in big games, but I think in terms of what I needed him for in the Serie A, I think he was pretty, pretty solid, played a decent amount, uh, scored two goals in his uh, 18 appearances. Uh, Marco Esposito was a free transfer, this was done before I uh, before I was there, he was picked up from Atalanta on a free. They also picked up Furlan Mendy before I signed as well, 32-year-old um, Furlan Mendy, again, left back. I think he was pretty solid for us, played a decent amount um, throughout the season. Him and my other left back were sort of chopping and changing. Um, solid, solid performer. Nothing spectacular from Furlan Mendy, I will say. And then the last one is Arejo, uh, who you may remember if you've watched the series before. We bought him whilst we were at AS Monaco. Um, nice little player. He was offered out to us on loan. We did pick up the loan um, and he did pretty well. Um, what's that? 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 appearances, 3 goals, 1 uh, assist. Um, did pretty well in the Italian Cup. That is all I'm going to say. Did pretty well in the Italian Cup. Nice physicals on him. Pretty good mentals. He's developing quite nicely. Um, and we got him from Atletico Mineiro over in Brazil. So that is all the transfers, guys. As you can see, 234 million out. This is a lot. And, but we did recoup 115 of it. So I think we did do okay on the whole. Um, in terms of the schedule then, I won't ruin any of the live gameplay if I can help it. Um, we move forward. We start the season okay. Nice 6-2 victory over Lazio. Lazio were the team that won the Serie A the year before. Um, so it was great to, to take them on in the first game of the season and give a little bit of a statement of intent. However, we followed that up with a disappointing 2-1 loss to Verona. And if I, oh, I can't look at the, I cannot 
why can I not see the full match details? Um, basically, the XG on this, we were dominating them in, in terms of XG, but Verona scored two decent goals and managed to get their way through. Um, in the Europa League, we did okay as well. Besiktas, Dinamo Zagreb and FC Copenhagen in our group. Um, we naturally advanced through that. Um, did very well in the Serie A, um, barring that loss to Verona. Had a little bit of a sticky patch here. Uh, draw with Monza, draw with Copenhagen, draw with Napoli. Um, especially considering in two of those games we didn't even score. That's quite a big issue. Um, moving towards the, the rest of the season though. As I said, we advanced through the Europa League group pretty comfortably. Lost to Roma in the league. Um, disappointing to go from a goal up to lose 2-1. Uh, at the uh, Stadio Olimpico. Uh, a nice December winning all of our games there. Um, despite starting to rotate in Europa League. Um, I think by... Definitely by this point against Dinamo Zagreb. We'd already qualified. Um, and Matthias De Ligt scoring a hat-trick in that game. Shows how powerful he is off of set pieces. Um, moving into January. You can see we advanced pretty nicely. Ro some ropey results there. Losing to Lazio. Losing to Inter as well. Who are our uh, hard-fought rivals towards the end of the season. Um, advanced in the first round of the Italian Cup against Spal. Uh, advanced in the next round against Hellas Verona. Took us uh, until extra time to get through. And it, we went through on an own goal in the end. Uh, Verona uh, were a very, very difficult team to get past, I will say. Um, beat them again in the league though, so that's not too bad. Very solid February, uh, beating Inter in the Italian Cup semi-finals. We beat them 1-0 in the away leg, Kingsley Coman getting a goal there. Um, and then beating them 2-1 at home, seeing us go through there. That was nice and comfortable in the end. Uh, rounding off February, nice victories against Genoa, Citadel and Monza. They are the two of, the, two of those teams got relegated. Genoa are somehow in the Champions League next season, which is just crazy. Um, moving forward, we go into March. Um, as you can see with March, Drew with Napoli again. Um, despite them not necessarily performing to expectations, Napoli are still a very difficult side to overturn. Uh, Stade Rene in the Europa League knockouts. We beat Bologna as well. We beat Fiorentina into the Europa League quarters. Uh, we beat Bayern Leverkusen. And when I say we beat Bayern Leverkusen, we absolutely decimated Bayern Leverkusen. We won the first game 7-1. Uh, and then fully rotated the squad for the away leg, as you can kind of see. Wojciech, Chesney, Piazza, Cometo. Um, this is definitely a second string on the right-hand side. Some of it you won't be able to see because it's behind my big fat head. Uh, but it was the second string, and we still managed to get a 2-2 draw um, over, over in Germany, which is a fantastic result. We followed that up, despite rotating everybody, um, with the league game against AC Milan. And we lost 1-0 at home, which is bad. But there we go. We then beat Torino 1-0. Ruben Diaz coming up trumps with a 93rd minute corner. We beat Spal in the league. Then Europa League semi-final first leg. We managed to topple Lazio. We took on Lazio. We beat them 4-0. I'm being very careful as to how far I go down now. Okay, right. That's as far as I can go down. Um, so we beat Lazio in the Europa League semi-finals. We beat them 4-0 in the first leg. We beat them 3-2 in the second leg. Pretty comfortable. We were ticking and firing on all cylinders towards the end of this season in my last stream on, um, on Tuesday. Uh, and as you can see, advancing very well. So at this stage, we are in the Europa League final. We are in the, in the running for the Serie A title. And we are in the final of the Italian Cup. So without any further ado, guys, let's get into the live gameplay from Twitch from Tuesday, and you can see what happened in those fixtures. YouTube, we are here to start the live portion of this video. Look at this competition screen. You can't see who we're playing in the uh, Coppa Italia final, or you can't really see that we're in it because my massive jug head is over the top of this bit here. We are taking on Lazio in the first of these three massive games. Um, Coppa Italia final. The next league match, hypothetically, we could secure the Serie A title. And we also have the Europa League final against RB Leipzig, who absolutely smashed their way through. We are about to go into our tactical meeting, though. We have been playing very well. We had a little dip down into second in the league, but we have been first for a long period of time. But today is, and this right now, is all about the Coppa Italia final. We need to win it. I would love to win it. This is going to be the team, then. We've just, we've just played Lazio in the um, Europa League semis as well. 
Um, Wojciech Szczesny has to go in goal because naturally when FM is about, my goalkeeper's injured towards the end of the season. He's out for five days to two weeks. So Wojciech Szczesny is in goal. Um, my, my major right back is injured um, as well. Oh no, sorry, he's suspended. So Weston McKinney is going to have to play right back. Delict, Kamatio, uh, and Mendy, Tonali, Bentica, Plata, Traore, Illing, who's been playing very well recently. And I've got Hans Guzens off the bench, who is my top goal scorer, but he needs a rest. And you know what? Today is not the day that he is getting that rest. He can rest the next league game. Kimpembe is lucky he's not been sent off. In real life, we've got Man City going on against PSG in the Champions League. So you can sort of see when this has been recorded, guys. So that is where we are right now. Um, we are about to get into this. Papa Italia final. Go out there and impress me. Moro and Mac. Moro has been very good recently. He scored a couple goals against this. Uh, Juan Macis, obviously a player we had earlier on in this save against Hertha Berlin. Against, with Hertha Berlin. Words. Come on, Steve. Big game. We've just beaten them twice in the Europa League. Home and away. I think we've beaten them twice in the league as well. As the bottle emotes come in from Andy, early doors. Boys, come on. Come on. You can't be doing me dirty like that. Chucking the bottles in right off the rip. Half an hour in. No highlights to speak of. First highlight then. Just after the half hour mark. And we're throwing it in right in our own uh, half. Passing it nicely up to Plata on the right-hand side. Tonali into Traore. Spins his man. Goes past two. Still going is Traore. Into Guzens. Into the penalty area. Hans Guzens. And he drags his shot wide. Interesting opportunity. Guzens actually not been very good in the games against Lazio in the Europa League. Despite us scoring a lot of goals, he didn't score many. Um, good set piece for us there. Unfortunately, headed that one at the goalkeeper. Furlan Mendy heads that one down. Illing up to Hans Guzens. Another chance. <laughs> Hans Cousins, who's been renamed by one of my subscribers, Ash. Hey, Alfonso, hit it with a ho yeah. <laughs> he gives us the lead in this Italian Cup final. And there's Ash, as I said, giving it the... Oh, yeah. First blood Juventus. Make sure we see things out. He scored. Uh, the decision to play him then has been... Um... Oh, McKinney's out on his feet at right back. Um, this guy's going to come on. Jonas Ruhi. Uh, never played for me before. Uh, so... Yeah, GG's. Come on in at right back, pal. Fingers crossed you can do it. Come on, boys. Oh. No, 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 no. That's a massive smash clear. I have a feeling Lazio are going to just start attacking us now. And maybe we can hopefully hit something on the counter. Romero. That's a long diag towards our right back who's not anywhere near our first team usually but we've played our way out of that so nicely Plata gets tackled into Bentico though he can pick a team apart Illing that's an absolutely massive challenge this is going to be a red card it's going to be a penalty we're going to the AR we have the penalty it is Guzens. These are this is a bad TikTok compilation. I want louder ones. <laughs> 
The one right at the start was really... No, not the one right at the start. Yeah. This, is, this is the best one. Oh man, Platter into the penalty area. It gets saved because it's straight at Strakosha. The Lict is knackered. We'll take him off. We'll bring on Ruben Diaz. We've already made two subs here. Um, so Bentacor Platter's Platter's going to come off, I think, for the loney from Monaco. Okay. Don't get too complacent. Right, okay, so PSG have just lost to Man City in the Champions League fi uh, semi-final. Second leg, 2-0. Rami's chucking in the bottles. Rami, not with 15 to go, please. Rami! Ten to go. Potentially, potentially the league trophy and definitely the Europa League final. We'll be back in a sec, guys. So we are on the final day of the Serie A season. The penultimate game of the season. Our former team, Atalanta, absolutely taught us a lesson. Um, we had the opportunity to win, uh, win the league with a victory at our former club. And they dismantled us. They dismantled us. They beat us 5-1 in the end. Um, so we had to win on the final day of the season to secure the Serie A trophy. Hans Gusens scored early. Matthias De Ligt has just scored from a corner just before I bring you this recording. We've got 10 minutes to go. The other game that we need to keep an eye on is Inter Milan versus Lazio. We are keeping a close eye on that one. Kingsley Coman has the ball here though. But win 
and win and the title's ours. We're in a good spot. We are 2-0 up, but we don't want to count our chickens just yet. We don't have a good goalkeeper. We've got a 37-year-old Wojciech Chesney in goal. We've got an injury to one of our centre-backs. We need to make some... We need to make some changes in the middle of the park. I've accidentally paused my recording there. As Hans Guzens is in and he misses an absolute sitter there. Um, so I've started the recording again. Happy days. Uh, we need to make some changes. Sandro Tonali for Arthur, maybe. And Bentacor for Sosig. Let's run that. We'll make the changes in the midfield. For the final 10. Here we go. Hit the space bar, Credo, and it was on. I was on my wrong tab. I was on OBS. I wasn't on. Um, I wasn't on FM, so that's why I had a little bit of a mare there. Wojciech the Chesney saves it. It looks like into a winning as well, but it looks like a routine. They've gone three 0 up, but it's a routine two 0 home victory. that sees us do the double in Italy. This, boys, has been one hell of a stream and we have the opportunity to win the Europa League for the second time in this save before resigning as manager again. And who knows where we're going to end up in domestic football. We've got the Euros with England before that. What a stream it's been this evening, guys. What a stream it has been. We'll be back for the Europa League final towards the end of it. It doesn't matter. We've done the League and Cup double. I'll see you in a sec, guys. It has to be. The cross comes over for Milling. And who else? Honestly, who Here else? Here we go, Hoya. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. Five minutes to go. It's Jeremy Doku running at us. They've squared it. That is a great save from my goalkeeper who's not played for ages. Is he not offside? No, he's not. Final five. Let's see if we can close this out. Uh, Tonali there. We need a central midfielder for Traore. And Bentica looks like the proper man to do that. The header goes over the bar. We go to a defensive set for the last few minutes. We are recording for YouTube. So welcome in again, YouTube, for ultimately us lifting the treble. This episode, you've seen the Italian Cup, the Italian League, and our second Europa League trophy. Game, set, and match. It's been an unreal stream tonight. We've won the treble. We're going to have to try and find a new job. We've got the Euros coming um, on Thursday, the day this video comes out, the day that you guys are watching this. We will be managing England in the Euros in 2028. To hopefully add another trophy to our growing trophy cabinet. I'll be back on YouTube in a sec with a little bit of a closer. It's going to be an interesting one. Twitch, you've been fantastic. I'll be back in a sec. So guys, as you can see, and from the live portion of this video, we secured an unbelievable treble as Juventus manager. As you can see, we picked up the Serie A title. Serie A title, that's on this side. Serie A title, Italian Cup title, and we also won the Europa League. Fantastic season, but you know what that means if you've watched any part of this series before. It is time for us to resign as manager of Juventus Boss. At the time of recording this, I, I will not have a job. At the time of recording this, technically, I'm still the Juventus manager. Um, however, we will be live this evening on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash gaming UK. We will be live on Twitch this evening, as as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have England flags there. We are in the summer of 2028, and we have the European Championships. We have the chance to bring a European tro uh, Championship trophy back to England, and that will be live this evening from 7pm on the day that you're seeing this video. Um, hopefully, 
during that time period, we will be finding ourselves a new club. Um, there are some clubs that will be looking for new managers. I believe Manchester United and I believe Real Madrid did not qualify for the Champions League. So fingers crossed we can get ourselves into one of those jobs. I think it'd be quite interesting. But that is where I'm going to leave things for today, guys. Um, as I said, I will be live this evening. Please do stop in if you can. Um, it'd be fantastic to see as many of you guys over on Twitch as humanly possible. Links to my Twitch will be in the description. Um, if you have enjoyed this little video recap, don't forget to drop a like on it down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And uh, make sure you ring that bell so you're told every time I upload a video. But until next time, guys, take care and hopefully I'll see you on stream soon.